to where you go in your destiny. And I don't think we put enough emphasis on it. Um, every relationship comes under fire be because of how powerful it is. Your uh, spousal relationship, family relationship, career relationship, relationships in the body of Christ, you know, um, uh, children, parent, parent, children, all kind of relationships are very important. And uh, I, was, I said this morning how relationships are like, like a, a buttons in an elevator. Some will take you up and some will take you down. And it's very critical how you navigate uh, through relationships because God strategically puts, placed people in your life to help you get to where you where he wants to go and we have to recognize those relationships and um, a lot of time we let people into our lives that really don't qualify and then and then sometimes there are Judas's in our lives that God tried I've been trying to tell you he was a Judas and we just let them in and let them get close how many you know people see people close to you it's the people close to you that can really help you or hinder you and so relationships are really, really, really critical. So I, I don't know about you, but um, I know that, and I found this out, that there are people God, that God used as a divine link. And some people, you ever notice how some people come in your life, and then they're there for a season, then they're gone? And, you, and, you're like, and God's like, that was just the, I just want to use them as a door. I just want to use them as a door. And then there's some people, they come in your life, and then they leave, and you're like, oh, why don't go? God's like, no, let them go. Let them go. I'm trying to get them out. Because they, they already, they got something working that you don't see yet. That's how good God is. But I'm going to give you some very practical things to help you, because um, God wants all of us, man. He wants all of us to really, 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 really maximize relationships. I'm going to show you how to protect relationships. So some of you got some awesome relationship, but you, it's vulnerable, and you got to work to protect it. Because God will say it? Okay. Yeah. No, because God will bring somebody in your life, and the devil like, oh, no, I can't let them. Oh, if I, if, if I let them stick around, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna inspire them to be all that God wants them to be, and I can't stop them. I got I to gotta disrupt this relationship. How many of you ever had a relationship? And, and after they left, you're like, man, I wish I hadn't uh, filed that one up. Sometimes we just sabotage them. So anyway, it's really critical, it's really important. So relationships on the fire. Everybody, everybody has a target on their relationship. Babies, parents, grandparents. I don't know who they are. <laughs> but it's on the fire. Even if you don't know it, it's on the fire. Devil got somebody plotting to take you out, disrupt you, steal your joy, steal your peace. But we'll be, we'll be able to uh, recognize it. I, I think I'm become a relationship expert. I done jacked up some, man. I chased some folks out, and I'm like, oh, man, can I, can I, can I go back and try to find them? And, uh, but then there's some people I let, I let in, and they, they ate my lunch and popped the bag. Yeah. yeah, it hurt too. So anyway, so I just come by here to tell you that we're going to talk about it. But today, I'm talking about the number one relationship in your life. If you don't get this one right, it's going to be hard to get all them other ones right. That's the relationship with God. Because our relationship with God defines all the other ones. They define all the, all the good ones, all the bad ones. Because um, they define the good ones in terms of me cultivating and, and like I always tell, you know, I've been saying this for years, my relationship with God defines my relationship to my wife, to my family, even to my church. Because if, if I don't have a relationship with God and God is not uh, infusing that relationship and showing me how to relate to people, then I really don't know how. Because a good relationship is not a relationship where everything goes well. You need some friction in a relationship. That's how you know whether you can deal with them. It's easy to get along when everybody getting along. It's easy. No, no, you really haven't thought of a relationship till you had a fight. And then we see how that shakes out. Okay, I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd. But, so I want to talk to you about um, 
your relationship with God. Go with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. Now, why do you want to talk just about this first? Because your relationship with God is under attack, and the devil is the number one uh, enemy. He'll try to get you to believe that God is mad at you. He try to get you to believe that God is punishing you now. You're going through all this because of something you did. He's trying to get you to think that God won't listen to your prayer because, you know, you haven't been faithful to him. He tried to get you to think God doesn't care about you. Okay. No. All right. You know, Second Corinthians chapter 5? Very familiar scripture. And I'm really, I don't know how long we're going to uh, do this today. But anyway. Uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Now, depending on what translation you read and uh, or how you, you know, I like to look up. Well, I, I don't look up all these words, you know, and to find the original meaning. But one of the meanings is a new species. Well, one I really like is a, a new race of people. Yeah. So if you ever fill out an application, they say, what race are you? Put other. <laughs> That's what I do. I write it other. You don't have it down here. Yeah, I do. I do other. Are you a minority? No. Minority? Me and God's majority play. Yeah. No, I'm not a minority either. I, how can I, how can I, I win all the time. How can I be a minority? Yeah, right. But anyway, other. A new. Okay, okay, let me stop. I, just, I get carried away. Y'all just. Look, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now watch this. Now all things are of God. All things what? Of God what? This new thing that God did in making his creation. In other words, it birthed of God. It came out of God. The Bible said Jesus said, he said, I, I'm, I'm out of God. I'm part of God. I came out of God. And so he said, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus. So, so today when we talk about celebrating the resurrection, what we're celebrating is the fact that through Jesus, through Jesus, death, the death, burial, and resurrection is a celebration of our champion. Amen. Glory to God. My champion was raised from the dead. The one I give my life to, lover of my soul. My, my champion, my king, my king. King, my man, Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, the, the only man I'm in love with. I'm in love with Jesus. I love Jesus, my champion. Anyway, so we're celebrating through him. Now, he said he reconciled. Reconcile means to make friends again, make one again, we make uh, compadres again. We can, we can talk. We can fellowship. We can hang out again. I've been reconciled through Jesus. After all these years, I'm still excited about Jesus. Amen. Man, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So, so through Jesus. So what that does mean is that I didn't do anything to deserve to be reconciled back to God. It's all through Jesus. Jesus did it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. I didn't, that's why the Bible talks about the gift of salvation. It's not something we earn, it's something we just receive. We, we receive. So your good, your bad, your whatever had nothing to do with this. So, so that's why we can't judge people. I, have no, I can't judge you. I didn't die for you, and I didn't deserve it either. So even what you're doing now, what I'm doing now, that's none of my business, none of your business, because the blood, the, that's why we, I love singing all them blood songs. I know they old, some of y'all like, what is this stuff we saying? You know, see, it's the blood, like Lynn said, the blood has never, ever lost its power. It was the blood of Jesus that caused all my sin, watch this, not to be forgiven, not to be forgiven, remitted. What does that mean? That means wiped out it means like it it wiped out and god said i'll never 
remember them again. So it was wiped out, never ever brought back up. It, it, it's, oh, it's, it's hard to believe. But it's like, now I can go to God as if I, I, I never did nothing. That's the way God sees me. When I accept Jesus, God sees me as if I've never, all that nasty stuff back in the 70s. <laughs> Jesus like what? Like, you don't remember what, over in Holland? Oh, Jesus. He said, he said what? I, oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I worship and adore you. Because he said, I'm not holding anything against you. There's nothing you, he said, you, when you bring it up, I'm like, what are you talking about? Because he said, I will never forget. So here's my point. He said, we've been reconciled. Reconciled to what? Just like we've been placed back in position like Adam had with God. Fellowship, yes. provision, peace, conversation. You know, you know, even when his wife got, got upset, you know, they stayed together. Even when his wife got him in trouble, he said, come on, babe, we got, we got to go. We got to go, but we're going to stay together. We're going to work it out. <laughs> and, and all of this is what Jesus brought us back. That's what the day we're celebrating is all about. He did. Okay, I want to give you two more points, two more points, and then I'll start preaching. Uh, go to, uh, uh, go to, no, 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 stay right there. No, 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 no. Go to, no. Oh, I already said that. Okay, okay, go to Acts 17. Glory to God. How many of you glad that Jesus is not remembering anything? Yeah. Think about it. God, God talking about God's love. That's love. God bankrupt heaven by sending Jesus to earth to reconcile man back. He just bankrupt heaven. He said, I'm giving everything I got so that, so, that, so that my people can have back this relationship that I used to have with Adam. So we stepped into the freedom that Adam had, the freedom that Jesus had. That's what this salvation is all. That's why some of us sing like we're crazy and, and just serve. And why? Because this is so real. God loves me so much. I don't deserve it. It's, it's, I can't earn it. I, I can't be good enough. And he said, I love you. You and your issues. And I'm telling you, one of the reasons why some people so mean to other people is they haven't received this love yet. Because when you receive this love and you know and you know how much he's forgiven you and how much he released you from and how much he's not holding against you, it's gonna be easier to let some folks go because they don't chew their gum like you chew yours. <laughs> it's amazing what we want to pick on people about. You you wearing that, you 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 with him let's shut up. I, I probably I shouldn't have said that in church. But 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 what we got to understand is, see, we'll be more compassionate toward people. We'll be more patient with people. How many of you know, everybody ain't there yet. I want to know if all the people that's in this here room that you're there yet. Raise your hand. Let's see how many of you have arrived yet. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So I can't judge you. I may not like what you're doing. I may think it's like, okay, that's, that's a, but you know what? I believe even somebody who's except Christ, my belief is that they're just maturing. It's kind of like a baby who falls down. You know, they fall down. You know, they one, two, however. Oh, they, all, they fall down. We're like, see, God, dog, how many? You falling down already? When are you going to learn how to walk? Well, see, some of us are like that spiritually. We're still walking. And so we get back up. We don't judge them. We're like, come on, man. You can do this. You're maturing. Some of you still cussing and, and slapping folk, but, but you're maturing out of that. We're maturing, aren't we? Some of us judging people, and I, they, they ought to know better by now. Well, they should, but they're not there yet. And what if Jesus did that with us? When are you going to get this? God, you've been in church for 15 years, and you still talk about people. You still criticize the people.
I'll be trying to remember some of the stuff I said. I said something really good this morning. Sugar. Oh, oh you remember that, huh? You think I should bring that back up again? It helped you? It helped you too? It helped you too? Oh, you, 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 don't, you don't need help. You're perfect. She's perfect. No, I was talking about how, um, oh, 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 I was talking, I was talking about how sometimes people have, have addictions, like whether it's cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, uh, uh, you know, all the stuff we say bad, right? And I'm like, where's something else? Where's something else? Because, 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 uh, because, you know, I use Steve, because since he, he, since he's saying sweet today, I'm going to use <laughs> So, so, you know, and this is where we, this is how we have to grow, because we'll judge the brother here because he has, he, he has a drinking problem. But we won't say anything to him, he eating 500 pounds of sugar every two weeks. That's an addiction, sugar is poison. So how come we give you a pass? Because we whack? Because... Because we put we put we put different things in categories. Yeah, okay, it's okay for you to, to eat thirty five hundred calories for lunch every day. I know. I'm just trying to do that for effects. But but if the brother over here still smoking, ah God, you better play. You going to hell? Smoking don't send you to hell. Somebody just like, oh thank you, Jesus. I, oh oh. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it doesn't. Smoking doesn't send you to hell. Drinking doesn't send you to hell. Smoking weed doesn't send you to hell. Okay. What else, Pastor? What else? What else can I? I'm not saying you get a pass. It'll open you up to some demonic activity in your life. It'll open you up to some crazy hallucinating and going to heaven quicker life. You know what sends you to hell? You know what sends people to hell? What sends people to hell is not accepting the stuff I'm talking about, the gift. That's what sends people to hell. Rejecting rejecting what Jesus had done. Send people to hell. Abraham, the Bible says Abraham, it was counted unto, it was counted unto him for, to righteousness because he believed. Activity don't send you to hell. Think about it. Jesus, when did Jesus die on the cross? A long time ago. None of you were here when he did that. Some, some people say 2,000 years ago. You weren't here, but you're still benefiting from for um, of your sin being remitted. So I mean, the first time I heard a preacher say that years ago, he said he forgive you of your your past, present, and future sins. I'm like, oh no. Then I thought about it. I wasn't here when he died, so it had to be future sins for me. I wasn't even here. It's amazing what you find out when you read the Bible. So, so. Jesus paid the price. He, he, he said, I'm taking on the whole, all the wrath of God. And then, so this is why it's so good. This is why it's so good. And then he said, now whoever will believe in me and accept me as Savior and confess me as Lord over their life, I impart to them the divine nature of God. And now they can, because God, you can't fellowship with God with, with a, a, a demonic nature. So he said, I'm going to impart the divine nature of God. Everything I have, I'm going to give to them. Everything they have, I'm going to take from them when I accept them. That's why we sit here and pray God like we don't have any sense today. And that's the gift. And I don't deserve it? No. Do I earn, did I earn it? No. You just receive it. I don't know about you, huh? I, I, you know, that's a good deal. That's a good deal right there. Now, what I want to talk to you about is, is this relationship because, see, a lot of people, a lot of people 
don't have a relate. A lot of the saints don't have a relationship with God. They know about Him. They come to church. They go to church, but they don't have a relationship with God. And that's what makes living for God hard. That's why there's a lot of spiritual dropouts. Because when well, I go to church every time, I serve in the church. How come? Because personal relationship is what God wants. And I'm hoping that uh, this, this really ministered to you today. Um, did I ask you to go to Acts? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Say divine nature. See, that means it's, it's in you. And the more you focus on the divine nature, now, okay, I'm not giving people a pass to do anything, but the more you focus on the divine nature of who you are, the more you start acting like who you are. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff starts falling off for you. I mean, it's just amazing. It's, it's, God's had it all figured out. But Acts 17, 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Watch this. And therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver. You know, it's something that we can just put on, take off, and put in our pocket. It's something shaped or something shaped by art and man devised. In other words, that's why I said we read the scripture earlier. It said, This is of God. Man didn't devise this. Man didn't come up with this. It's all of God. God loves us so much that He is yeah. aggressively pushing his love toward us, pushing his grace toward us, pushing his divine nature. So I don't have to try to be holy. I got the nature to run in holiness. I used to illustrate him about a dog, one of them dogs, the, the Great Dane. The, that's the Great Dane that runs, right? He, he doesn't have the, he, a Great Dane and a, and a Snows, that doesn't, they don't do the same thing. Snows just want to lay around and, and let somebody pick him up all the time. The Great Dane want to run, chase something. Because that's his nature. Well, I got the divine nature of God. And so, and so I don't have to try to be good. I don't have to try. It's my nature. The more I, I focus on it and major on it, the more I, I want to. See, the, the nature changes your want to. The nature changes. You can get somebody, put them in an uh, inpatient clinic and all of that, and let them stay there 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But if they want to, don't change. As soon as they get out from under those restrictions, they're going to be right back where they were. But that's the way it is with God. Now, um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I'm going to give it to you out of Amplified because here, this is uh, my jumping off point. All right. And I'm kind of jumping in the middle of this. Hebrews 13, 5 says, For he, God, Himself has said, I'm t this, this is this, this, this blessed me every time I read it. I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not. I will not. In case you didn't hear it, I will not. In any degree, leave you helpless, nor forsake you. Let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Now this is the God who made, who went through all this pain to put all the wrap on his son so that we can be back to fellowship with him. Oh my God. I think the reason why people have faith is not because they don't know a lot of the word. I think the reason why people's faith is not strong is because they don't realize how much God loved them. Everybody in here that's born again, God's talking to you. Here's what he said. I will not in any way fail you nor give you up, nor leave you without support, my God. What comfort would that be to a, a, a brand new uh, uh, parent thinking, 
I'm not good enough to raise your child. I'm telling a child myself. And God said, I will not fail you. What you don't have, I'll make up. What about the, 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 new, the new daddy or the new, the new husband trying to, trying to lead his family and he just lost his job? God said, I know you lost your job, but I will not fail you. I will not leave you without support. You can count on me to find a way to make a way out of no way. Because I have covenant with you. I will never leave you by yourself. What about the, 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 the woman who's been married 10 years, then all of a sudden her husband found some floozy, and then she, he just called home and said he can't even got the nerve to come home and get his stuff. He just texts home, I ain't coming back, I'm done with you. And she's sitting there crying. And then, but, but, but somebody gave her a CD, a DVD of this sermon, and she's listening, and she's hearing some little short preacher say, God say, he will not fail you. He will, he will not leave you without support. You may not get child support, but you're going to get some God support. How confident is that, man? How confident is that when you get a position on the job? You, maybe you get promoted above your Above your level, above your training, above your, and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to sabotage this. I don't, what am I going to do? God said, listen, you, I put you here. I'll keep you here. I will take you through this. You may not know how you got here. That's a door I opened up for you, and I'm going to see to it. I'm screaming, huh? I'll see to it. I'll support you even when you're in over your head. Good God Almighty. It ain't always bad stuff. God got us, man. I don't know what to do with all this. God, he's doing it. I will never forsake you. What kind of comfort is that? That's the God, y'all. That's the God we serve. That's the God who said, he says, he said, he said, look, I went through all of this. I went through all of this to get you in relationship with me. I want you to enjoy me. I want to enjoy you. I want, it's you and me. How can you not trust somebody who loves you like that? In spite of us. God, I messed up. That's what mercy for. He's telling you, that's what mercy for. Mercy is you not getting what you should get. And he said, mercy followed me. How many days? All the days of my what? All the days. I'm telling my, so, so there may be people in here that, well, I gave my life to Jesus, but I went right back. And back, back. I'm so deep in this stuff right now. I only own you and I came to church because it's Easter. And that's okay. Because God knew you was coming. And God drew you. Oh, man, can I just talk for a minute? See, some of you, some of you are like, I don't know why I can't. I don't even know why I can't. God drew you because he wanted to talk to you. He wanted to let you know it ain't over. God said, I'm not like some of the people you know to just throw you away when you make two mistakes. He said, my mercy is hovering over you. I, I started dealing with you a couple weeks ago. I just used somebody to take, come on, let's go to church, baby. Yeah, he said, no, 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 no. Don't, 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 think, don't think it's too late. Don't think it's over. Don't think, you, well, I'm just doing this. No, no, God said, I got you right where I want you. Mercy. Goodness. He said, I'll never let you down. Even when you think it's over. And you think, ah, you just screaming. God said, when you're done screaming, I will not leave you without support. I will not in any degree leave you helpless. Forsake you, let you down. He said, I'm not going to relax my hold on you. I'm going I'm to keep holding on. God is amazing, saints. I said, God is amazing. And he wants to show himself strong in your life and in my life. So we need to let, we, this is the message, because he said, I didn't read it. I've given you the ministry of reconciliation. This is what we need to be telling people. Quit telling people, you need to stop doing that. You, you need to stop eating all that sugar, too. But quit telling them you need to stop this. Start telling them you need to trust God. Hallelujah. Man, the Bible said in Romans chapter 4, 2, it is the goodness of God that caused men to repent. It's not the fear. Well, let's get the hell out of them. Maybe they'll turn around. No. It's the goodness of God. Don't you like goodness? Okay. Now, um, 
I want to go to Revelation chapter 4. Why would anybody not want a relationship with this God? Who would not want to be taken care of by God? Glory to Jesus. Yeah. See, this is where the Bible says this is the confidence we have in him if we have anything according to the word. This is where the confidence in God comes. This is where I establish this confidence and and because see, now I know God is for me. Hallelujah. God is for me. I know all this stuff going on, but God is for me. Jesus is for me. I don't know how it's going to shake out, but I know I ain't losing my mind. I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm going to keep trusting God. Somehow, some way, this is going to work. Because he said, he said uh, I'm more. He said, I am more than a conqueror. Now, that's not just a cute Bible verse. You know, and I, I'm, I don't want to draw attention to myself, but I'm with myself all the time. And so I, I, I tell myself all this, especially when I'm going through, friendly, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. God is for you. I will not be afraid of what men say or do. God is for me. Say that with me. God is for me. For you. It's me. Say me. Not, not for me. But for like you. I'm saying for me, yeah. Say, God, God is, for me. is for me. Okay, now I want you to say it like this. God is for me. God is for me. Okay, now I want you to say it like this. God is for me. Hold on. God is for me. <laughs> okay. 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 We're going to say it now, class. I know, I, know y I, know, I know it's getting good to you. <laughs> but see, this is what you got. This is how you got to, Bible said, encourage yourself. In the Lord. You, you don't think this. You got to say this. I mean, you can think it first, but you got to say it. Okay, God is for me. I want you to put an emphasis on me. Me. <laughs> Ready? Go. God is for me. That's why Jesus died. For you. For you. He died. For me. I don't know about you. I, 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 I'm like, God, thank you. One of the reasons this is so important, because we have a bad case of, you know, we live in a very competitive world, and, and, and you know, we're always looking at what folks achieve and, and what, what the world calls success. And, and so, and then we start disqualifying ourselves, like, oh, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that, and I'm not doing good at them, and hush all that. I said, hush all that. That's Southern. Hush. Because one of the things that people do, see, when you have a relationship with God, you're no longer defined. You don't let other people define you based on what you have, what you don't have, you know, what people call success. Well, I, I'm, I, I think I'm going to do it in this series. Uh, I was reading the other day about, about I don't know what I was reading it, about mothers. That is one of the most noble, most Powerful positions in the earth to be a mother. And some people are like, what you do? I'm a I'm a stay home mom. Oh wow, that must be that must be boring. Boring? Are you kidding me? I got the opportunity to raise a champion for God. I have an opportunity to shape this generation. Because see, them folks, you sending your baby down there too. Okay, don't let me get started. I, uh, I ain't gonna say that. But but the world would define us. And I, I learned a long time ago. I'm gonna go into it. But I learned my relationship with God started affecting me to where I like, cause you know, you get a front, you in front. Everybody, it's almost like a target put on you. Everybody got something to say about what you do, how you do it, and all of that. And if you're not careful, you start buying into that. Well, maybe I probably need to dial back a little bit on some of that. But then, when you understand your relationship with God is more important than anything, you're like, look, 
your opinion don't matter to me because I don't need your approval. <laughs> I don't need your approval. I don't need your validation. I already got some. And see, and I know that that's more than a notion, but once you get there, I'm telling you, life start taking off. I don't need you to validate. I mean, I'm not talking about you. Well, I don't, but I don't need, I don't need anybody to validate me but God and, and this woman right here. Because I'm about to take care of her all the days of her life. So I need her to every now and then say, way to go, champ. Way to go, champ. She likes to, you know. No, I, I mean, you know, like when we, like, okay. What script are y'all at? Where y'all at? Huh? Oh, Revelations. That's a good one. Okay, let's, let's, let's look at this because this is his essence, and this is, this is the crust of my matter. I went through all of that to get to this part. Revelation 4, 11. I'm reading out an old King Jimmy because I like the way it says it that, toward the end. Thou art worthy, O God, oh Jesus, to receive glory and honor and what else? For thou hast created all things. Now, question, are you part of all things? Yes. Okay. And for thy pleasure, they are. They what? All things that were created. They are and were created. Okay, get this. Man, this is this is worth the price of admission. Whatever they charge you to get in here, this is this is worth it right here. For thy pleasure, they are and were created. What? All things. You ever you ever like maybe take a take a drive down south in the sewer highway during the summertime and those wildflowers out there? And it looked like, looked like somebody just sat there and planted them and put them in there. You're like, wow. And then there's some way up there. You got to need binoculars. You can't even see them. But they're way up there. And you're like, well, golly, who, who, who are those for? Who, who gets to enjoy those? But guess who? God, God planted them. You may not be able to climb up there, but God like, oh, I like them flowers. Wow, I like that. All things, all things were created. All things were created for, created for thy pleasure. They are and were created. So the original purpose of anything that was created was for God's pleasure. The original purpose for anything God created was for his pleasure. The original purpose of anything that was created was for God's pleasure. Were you created? Yes. All right. Listen carefully. This is, I, I don't know. I know this just messed me up. God loves me, yes. But he gets pleasure out of relationship with me, especially when I come back to him. Because he doesn't need, he doesn't, it, it, that's why praise and worship and thanksgiving is so important. God gets pleasure out of a relationship with you. See, a lot of people, we live in this performance-oriented world. Well, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this, and God, God don't care. God doesn't care about that. What's most important for him is the fact that he has get pleasure from his children. I, I mentioned this this morning. All of us, those of us that have children, you know, uh, those of us who have children, at, at one point of their existence, we got pleasure from them. At some point, you know. You know, I say that because sometimes, you know, folk grow up and they get disobedient and, you know, they disappoint you with the decisions they make and, and you know, ain't no pleasure in that. But at some point, when they were coming up, <laughs> we got pleasure. And some of them, because they, they made up their room, cleaned up behind themselves, it was just because you're like, wow, that's my baby. Mm-hmm, that's my baby right there. Look at it, look just like your daddy, don't it? Look at it. <laughs> then when they do something, that's her baby. That's her baby. <laughs> but at some point, God, see, God doesn't want you for what you can do for him. 
that's not the number one priority in his life, or what you can do for him or who you are for him. He wants relationship. And this is one of the things, it's been my experience, where a lot of people don't put a priority on a personal relationship with God. We work hard at looking like we're spiritual, making sure we do the spiritual duties, but a personal relationship. And then you, have, you don't have to be deep. You can, you can, you know, you can, you can, you don't have to be deep. Just, just acknowledging him. God, I just want to thank you. I think one of the, one of the perks I get from doing this is that I go into a lot of situations that are like really bad. I mean, I'm good, Ray. God told me yesterday, I want you to go. We're going on a trip. To a bad, very, very bad situation all the way across country. I'll be back next Sunday. But, and sometimes we think we got it bad. So one of my perks is like, wow, I don't have any problems. I don't have any problems. <laughs> you don't have any problems. And Sometimes just the small thing, being able to sit down and get up without any aid. Thank you. Acknowledging. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. I, I, I praise God for you. I praise God for you. I praise you and I thank you. And I thank you for being patient with me. I know I promised this five times I was going to do this. Here I it, it didn't even get out of my mouth all the way the fifth time. Here I am again. But thank you for being long-suffering for me. He gets pleasure out of He He wants you more than what you can do for him. Well, I, you know, I, I got to pray. I got to impact life. Yeah, all of that is good. But the first thing is my personal relationship. Because really... Even if I don't have a personal relationship, even my service may be a little tainted. And you know it tainted when somebody don't say thank you. Oh, oh, all oh, if I did, they, they could at least say thank you. Well, why'd you do it? Because God would tell you, thank you. And and a lot of what we do, a lot of what we do is, is well, the byproduct of a personal relationship with Jesus, the byproduct is, is how it flows out of us to other people. But my, his number one, God, the number one pleasure he gets from us is not you laying hands on the sick and all that. That's good. I'm not negating that because we're supposed to do it. But the number one thing, when your eyes open, before you get out of the rack, the bed. Lord, thank you for this is the day the Lord of the Father. I'm going to rejoice today. I don't even know what all I got to deal with today. But you know, you know, it didn't catch you by surprise. Because while I was sleeping, you were watching them plot. And so, yeah, yeah, you see how this is going. But you know what? Lord, I thank you. My relationship with you. And remember, I talked about protecting. And so I'm going to protect my because the enemy is coming after that thing. If he can sever me from my relationship, he can sever me from the power of God. Because, because he said, it's God who's at work in me to will and to do his perfect work, his, his, his will. And so there's power in my life because of my relationship with him. Doors open for me. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't God already God is talking to people. I had none of the idea. God did that. I can't take credit for it. All I got to do, Lord, Lord, I just, I, 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 here I am. And so I acknowledge it. I, I was the other day, when it was real sunny, Friday morning, I think it was, when it was, when it was spring. Was that Friday? <laughs> <laughs> Thursday or Friday. So I got my car, I got early, 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 early in my car, and I, my, my toy car, and I, and I just, I just said, I'm just going to drive until my mouth get dry from praising and thanking you. So I ended up almost down to Kenai. Yeah. I dropped my top on that joker. I had to put it back up. It was cold. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped it for a little while, though. I drove. It got cold. 
And I'm like, God, first of all, I said, Lord, you know, I enjoy this. I'm like, thank you. This is, this is like the only toy I got. But I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying it. Thank you for blessing me. But, but oh, for, for about an hour and a half, man, I'm just praising and thanking God. And, and I'm not trying to impress you, but I'm just, I'm just and this is what some of it came out of. I'm like, God, you know what? I just, I know I'm not your best. I know I'm not your most obedient, but I love you. I want to be all that you called me to be. And I'm just thanking him. I'm thanking him for, for the dog I used to have. Thank you for allowing me to enjoy virtue. That was back in 1992, 90, no, 89. I had a boxer, and her name was Virtue. They had punched her. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll say, why you punch my dog? Anyway, she said, I didn't punch her. But, 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 but God is pleased with you. And he craves a relationship with you. Don't put some man above God. Don't put some woman above God. Don't put some career. You put all your juice, all your juice into energy into a job and, and God gets nothing. All he had to do is scramble a couple chemicals up here and you'd be like, oh my God, which way is up? But the, but the other side of it is when you, when you, when you, when your relationship with him is so tight, you have sweatless victory. He start taking you into places. You're like, oh man, I didn't even know this was the, and, and it's just because he loves you. He doesn't want to see you struggle. He doesn't want to see a struggle. He wants our families whole. He don't want everybody, everybody you know, he, he wants us whole. He loves us, man. He wants to be our most significant other. He went through all of that with Jesus so that we can be reconciled back to him. We can come in fellowship with him for his pleasure. For his pleasure. Let's get out of this competition thing and and work thing. I got to do all of this so God be pleased. That's not true. Now, again, when he's number one, you don't want to work. That's why a lot of times people, they, they start volunteering and ah, ah, I don't want to do this no more. You wasn't, it probably wasn't, you probably were doing it because somebody asked you in the first place. God looks at the heart. He wants to know, is your heart in this? Is your heart in this relationship? Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Why do you want why do you want God to bless you? So you can throw down? You know what I mean by that? <laughs> she said, no, I don't know what that means, man. She, she must be over 50 something. <laughs> I'm just playing. But no, but no, cause because it's 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 kind of like, now don't get me wrong, we all get tempted. Cause when folks say you will never. You will never be nothing. You, I'm gonna see to it that you never recover. You, you gonna, s <laughs> and then, and then, and God pull you out and take you to a place you never been. The, you want to go by their house or by their office and say, "Hey, how you like me now?" Uh, 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 uh. You want to? You want to? We don't. We find a way to make sure they find out. <laughs> I know, that's wrong. That's wrong. But sometimes, sometimes. When you get into a relationship with God like what I'm talking about, it causes us to be immune to what others think about us. But I'm going to close with this. It causes us to be immune to what other people think about, uh, think about us. It causes us to be immune. Not, I'm not, you know, you think about it. I don't want it. I don't. Is there anybody here that want people to hate them? You want people to talk about you, put you on blast? Anybody like that? Okay. Because none of us like it. And it's going to happen at some point. But it doesn't have to affect us cause us to go into a funk because of what other people do. When my relationship with God is so tight, I, and I'm, I'm talking from experience now, you just understand 
God, you know my heart. And we don't, even when we mess up, because we don't do everything right. Uh, I don't. God, you know my intention. That was not my intent. Now, I can't help how people, the filter they got and how they receive it, but that was not my intent. So, you know, so, so all this backlash, I praise God. I praise you and thank you. You're my deliverer. You, you, every trial to come, I know these people at work, they think because I got promoted, now they can't stand me. But you know what, Father? Thank you. I'm going to love them. I'm a, you know, if you were here last week, we, what would we do to all our, those who mess with us and persecute us? Bless them. Lord, I bless them. I pray that they have the, the time of their life understanding who you are. But I think the biggest benefit is the boldness and confidence that we have in him. That's why he said you come in that relationship, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. When situations look impossible, when, when I mean, people, people maybe in your life, that they may be trained in this, but they don't know. You, God said, Just do this. Say this. Go here. Say this. Or you pray, Lord, I just want to call something to your attention. My grandkids don't need to be with that monster. So in Jesus' name, I'm coming on the basis of my blood-bought rights. You want me and my children to be blessed, and my grandchildren. So on the basis of what Jesus, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost when I say this. On the basis of what Jesus did, not mine, because you know, I was I was too nasty the other day at the the Fred Myers click, she dropped my stuff. I had to go all the way back down to aisle seven and get another one. But on the basis of what Jesus did, I claim deliverance for my grandbaby in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I got something to do now. I'm going to leave it there and know, and know that it's working. And no, what? That it's working. I'm about to catch a runoff, man. I'm, I, I'm being cool, but but I just I just had I just had a bad reputation last night. Good. And know that it's working. You you can pray something. I'm gonna let y'all go in a minute. <laughs> you can pray something, and it's like you feel like ten miles of unpaved road. Uh -huh. See, this thing this has nothing to do with feelings. Feeling right, being righteous has nothing to do with feeling. That's why a lot of people in different religions, they got to have statues or, or crosses and got to have something tangible to feel like they all right with God or, or go talk to a man in a, in a little cage, cage uh, booth and, and because they need something to feel, to feel. But see, this has nothing to do with how I feel. It has everything with what Jesus did and me believing what he did. I got to get out of here. I am so glad that I'm saved. Listen, I'm getting saved -er, saved -er. I don't know if I can get, I'm, I'm, man, I ain't never leaving Jesus. And I'm going to do everything I can. If you're going to come back to this church, I'm, I already, I'm going to get warn you. I'm going to warn you. All I'm going to talk about is how you can be just like Jesus. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. I'm still pressing. I'm still pressing. I want my shadow to be, to be, be raising folks up. I ain't going to never back down. We don't, we don't have to back down. He always causes us to triumph. We're never at a loss. I don't care what it looks like. We serve a God that can make folks run they ain't no, when ain't nobody chasing them. Father, we thank you. I got a little carried away. Now, I want to pray. And I just want to make this appeal to you. And you can do what you want to do with it. But the bottom line is, I mentioned in the service, what messes people's lives up and causes them to miss out on the goodness of God, on the inheritance that Jesus purchased, is them not accepting, receiving what Jesus had done. Don't get me wrong. I think you should come to church because you can hear about this. But your church attendance or lack thereof does not uh, turn God off. But it will... It will hinder you from growing in the things of God. So I'm not saying it's okay. It, it, there's a detriment because God calls you to do it. But most 
importantly is your relationship with God. If you're here today, and you may be, you may be in church, you may have been a church member for 30 years, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor today. And all of you, everybody, all of us, I want you to make an examination. And if you know you're not in a relationship with God, I'm going to ask you to, to stop, stop lying to yourself. Because what's at stake is the life. Some of you are already trying to get it, and God, like, I already got it. But here's the way, here's the way you get it. My God, thank you, Lord. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, that's what this Easter, we call y'all, we call Easter Resurrection Sun, Sunday. Well, I, I, I celebrate because every day I say, Lord, I thank you for redeeming my life from destruction and crowning me with love and kindness and acts of tender mercy, sending Jesus for me when I didn't deserve it. I have Resurrection Day every day of my life, every day. So I want to ask you to examine yourself and then make a decision today to give God your life. Make adjustments. Whatever's on the throne of your heart, move it off. Move it off. And then allow him to have the throne of your heart. Father, I pray for people under the sound of my voice. I pray, my Jesus, I pray that every decoy be removed now or at least be exposed so people can make that decision. I pray for those that have never, ever received the gift of God. And they thought that maybe if I, if I can just be good enough, I'd be a, we can't be good enough. Jesus is the only one good enough. I pray that you would receive the gift. The Bible says the day that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Some of you here this morning and God is speaking to you. He drew you here today. He drew you here today because he wanted to let you know. He's head over heels in love with you. The plan of God for your life has no expiration date on it. And he wants you to tap into that today. He wants you happy. I mean, your blood pressure will go down just from understanding how much God loves you. Yes, it will. So I'm going to ask you to make that decision today. You can mark it down. You can mark it down. If you make that decision today and follow through, you can mark it down. Things will be different in your life and in your home. And then as we learn how to navigate through relationships, you will see the power of God in every relationship in your life, your house, your marriage, your children, your relationship outside of the house. And, and then you'll see a domination over the forces of darkness like you've never seen in your life. You'll go around looking for folk to pray for. Thank you. If you're here this morning and you have some addictions, and you, you, you say, okay, you know what? I need, to, I, need to, I need to deal with it. I'm done with it. I'm ready to be free from it. This is your time too. Your relationship with God. Hallelujah. As you're focused on the divine nature, you have a nature of a conqueror. You don't need that stuff to feel good. You don't need it. Your body, you tell your body to stop craving it because you operate in the authority that Jesus gave you. Lord, we thank you. So if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I need to give my life to God. I need to confess the Lordship of Jesus. I need to receive the free gift of righteousness. If you're not sure if you've ever done it, you really need to make that move now. now I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask you to respond. Father, these people, there are people here who need to make a decision that will change the course of their life, that will impact their life, and some it will, it will put us on track for you. I pray that they will not reject the goodness of God. We know that life is choice driven. We live and die based on the choices that we make. I pray that they choose life today and not allow anything, the past, the present, or future issues hinder them from stepping into the purpose of God. I thank you today. Thank you, Father. I thank you for it. Now, in Jesus' name, every lion voice telling you it's not going to work. The forces of darkness, I rebuke you, bind you, set you down. I shut you up. You cannot hinder what God is doing and what God is touching in the hearts of people right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, my God. I see. 
I see something in Jesus' name. Now, if you say, Pastor, I need to change the course of my life, I do. I really do. Now, I want you, please, do me, just do me a favor today. I'm not going to embarrass you.